A very warm welcome to you as you join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Chiamaka Ohauchi. Beginning from this episode, we will be bringing you a series of interviews on how to institutionalize tax paying culture in the Nigerian polity. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? You remember that the theme of the 20th Annual Tax Conference, which was held in May 2018, was institutionalizing tax paying culture in a developing economy. On the sidelines of the conference, Tax Matters sat down with some of the leading lights in the Nigerian taxation subsector with a view to charting a course towards this goal. We'll begin with Dr. Mark Abani, who for a long time served at Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs in the UK and who also was a member of the Board of the Federal and Land Revenue Service from 2008 to 2012. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Abani. I have uh, an extensive background in taxation, both in Nigeria and internationally, uh, and I consult widely on the wider picture of internally generated revenue, not just taxation. Uh, good to hear that you are, you are what you can call a big fish. What are the critical factors, in your opinion, in institutionalizing tax paying culture in the cities area? Um, making tax work, getting people to buy in, to giving up their hard-earned money uh, to the state um, is several folds. First of all, uh, taxpayers have got to have a feeling that they're getting something for their money. Uh, at the moment, there is a disconnect between tax that is paid and services that citizens have to use and sometimes have to provide for themselves. The second part of it is transparency. I have a favorite saying I always say, they know they chop village money. When citizens start to pay tax, they will start to look at what government is doing and that needs to start with accountability and transparency. And that's the expenditure side. Now that is not really the taxation side, but it's the critical part. You know, two hands have to clap in order for you to have a sound. People need to know that the money that they're paying and that the money that the government is collecting, both tax and non-tax, is being used wisely, judiciously and impactfully on society. So when people start to feel that they can see that the government got X million or billion Naira from this source or that source and have actually used that money for one or two projects, something that they can see in their lives, then they will start to believe in that process. If we come back to my saying, the reason why nobody chops village money is because everybody contributes some money, everybody wants to know what is done and everybody knows what the outcome is going to be. That is the transparency and that is the accountability. Now the third thing that we need to do is we need to educate taxpayers. Even tax authorities, or may I say even more especially tax authorities, because there's a lack of capacity. So people don't always understand the rules, don't understand the law on both sides of the fence. This leads to disputes, it leads to wrong uh, taxation bills, which means that people again start to lose confidence in why they should pay their tax. So a combination of a social contract, some indication that my money is being used for me and my brother, not necessarily for me, some education so that I know whether you're justified in asking me what you're asking me for, some rationalization in those uh, bills that are coming through, and definitely improve capacity within the tax authorities to even understand what they have. Uh, but is that day nearby? What I mean is, in your interaction with the tax authorities, you are involved with the Governor's Forum and all that, do you see any efforts being made in those regards? I mean, accountability, transparency, uh, giving value for money. Are we doing anything that suggests that that day is close by? Um, I'm not so sure about how close it is, but certainly in some states in the Federation, that day is just around the corner. I mean, the most notable one is Lagos, where people can see their tax money at work. But apart from Lagos, there are some up-and-coming stars. States like Quara State um, have hypothecated a part of the PAYE revenue they receive to an infrastructure fund, 
which means that people can see that this infrastructure is coming from their tax. And they're beginning to go to places that have never had any government input. So they've started to see that uh, happening. The various other states are moving up the ladder in terms of the transparency and accountability. So if you go to places like Kano, Kaduna, uh, uh, Abia State, these are all states where they have an open single bank account. So you can do your payments online, you can get your work done online. So already you're now sure that when I pay the man who purports to be the tax man, it's not going into his pocket. It's actually being used, going into the government pockets, which comes back to the second part, how it's spent. But so there is some movement in some states to do this, but there's not enough movement across all of the states. And part of the problem is that while there is lip service, there is not real political will to make sure that some of these things happen. There are a few incentives being thrown around now. You know, I think people have tried to stick and it's not quite worked, so they're now trying the carrot. So there's a program, for instance, that the World Bank is trying to work out with a number of, I think, most of the states of the Federation, which includes giving a, a reward, a financial reward, if they publish their statistics online, if they publish their budget online on time if they publish how the expenditure is being made on a quarterly basis on time, if they publish a harmonized view of all the laws so that an ordinary citizen can know what is going to be charged for or not charged for. If those are met, then the states get a financial reward in terms of significant sums of money they can use for further development. So that's a stick approach that's happening. Uh, unfortunately, not every state is fully geared into this. I, I was discussing with somebody recently and the reaction of uh, some of the state officials was publish what we collect online, then the citizens are going to ask us what oh, are we doing with the money? And I said, bam, that's exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's the goal. So the day will be here faster for some places than others in Nigeria. Um, but uh, it's still some distance away and it is going to require sustained pressure through all of the various governments and various iterations. In some ways, I am praying that the Iranian deal is signed so that oil doesn't go up, so that we're forced to continue to look inwards. You spoke about uh, the example of Kwara State of Nigeria, where some part of the PAY collection is dedicated to infrastructure development. Would you subscribe to the view uh, that when you, for example, tenement rates or whatever local government charges you levy, yes. that some part of that money should be returned to that community? This has been tried. Um, a, a DFID ran a GEMS program. Uh, and the GEMS program tried a tax for service approach, which was especially with local governments. And in local markets, they actually found that by one, making sure that everybody in the market knew the price that they were supposed to pay, so not everybody could suddenly turn up and decide it's 70 naira per day or 60 naira or 50 naira. They all had one single price. But they also came into MOUs with the local government chairman that a percentage of the money collected from a market would be spent back in the market. And the results were outstanding, really, really outstanding. And more and more, we need to start working with market associations, trade associations, at much the same way as we work with employers to make them agents of PAYE collection. Um, most people, even tax officials, would not pay their tax if they were not under PAYE. So working with uh, some of these market organizations and so on, in order to make them the agents for collection in the um, informal sector, would be a critical step forward. It's non-statutory, so it would be good if it's backed up by some statute that says that this can be done legally, the same way as PAYE can be done legally, and this would help to engender that confidence, engender that approach, and reach all the grassroots. You spoke about market-to-men, trade associations, and generally, of course, this is debatable. Yeah. I mean, people will say that they turn around millions in those markets, but if you ask any of them, they will tell you, ah, we are the downtrodden. Indeed. You, the ones in ties and suits, are the big ones. Okay, so, <laughs> the good books, I mean, particularly all the religions, talk about the rich taking care of the poor. Yes. Even in traditional societies, we talk about the rich taking care of the poor. 
how can we get the rich to pay adequate taxes, the high net worth individuals? Okay. Uh, first of all, the Nigerian laws are actually equitable. They're in line with Adam Smith in the sense that, for instance, personal income tax, if you earn below uh, 300,000, you actually only pay 1% tax, uh, all the way through to if you earn above 3.2 million, your marginal rate of tax goes up to 24%. Uh, so the, the laws are already in place. The problem is getting that buy-in. Now, it's a number of things. One is capacity of the revenue authorities to actually to be able to understand and use publicly available information about individuals' wealth, and then bring them together and ask questions in the first place. The second part of it, and the most important part of it, is actually the political will. And this happens in some states, where if I identify you as somebody who has a significant income source, then I would, if you don't want to make a self-assessment, I will now make a best of value, a best of judgment or assessment on you, for that best of judgment assessment to be reasonable and to hope to stand up through the appeal process, which inevitably will follow when there's a rich man involved, it needs to be logistic, it needs to be realistic and logical. So if you're a rich man who's got 20 houses in Maitama, we know an average rent there is 10 million. That tells me already that your income is uh, 200 million. So I already have a figure. Now, I'm not going to give you any deduction for expenses. It's for you to come and start showing me why not. And if you want to hide your remaining 35 properties in Lagos from me, then you just simply pay the tax on 20. But you could imagine that if everybody who owned property in Maitama was paying tax on the rent that they are receiving, already they would start to feel that impact. The second part of that is, again, back to the political leaders and political uh, leadership. Unless they actually are paying tax on some of their private businesses, they won't understand what people are having to pay across the piece, and they won't be interested in rationalizing the tax laws. So we need to have a carrot and stick. One of the things about enforcement, I used to be head of enforcement in uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. One of the things about enforcement is it's the threat of enforcement that works, not the actual enforcement. Sometimes you have to take a few people out and make scapegoats. When they now realize that if that big man can be held for it, me too, I can be caught, then they will start to pay up something. So we do need to do that one. But even the big men themselves feel even more aggrieved because they're the ones who are tarring the roads. They're the ones who are putting in the boreholes. They are the ones who describe themselves as a local government. And indeed, for many of them, they are because people in their community would not go to school, would not have water, would not get medical care if it wasn't for them. So if you're going to take out the money that I use directly for my people, you've got to guarantee me that when you collect it off me, it's going to go back into the system. Mm. It all revolves around accountability. Absolutely. Transparency. That's the key mm. to the whole thing. Every day, my people, they for work. Some they do office work. Some get it, they own business. So all of them, them want good road. Constant power for better life. Oh, whether now office work. Oh, yeah. Pay your tax. Whether now your own business. Oh. Pay your tax. Want a better life, oh? Pay your tax. Now your civic responsibility. Pay your ha! tax. Better soup. Now money could come, oh. oh yes. Nothing goes for nothing, my brother. If you want portable water, security and hospital for make life jolly. That's right. Good roads, good hospitals, portable water, adequate security all come from taxpayers' money. Play your part in making Nigeria great. Everybody, small scale, big companies, entrepreneurs, do the right thing. Pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. You spoke about the fact that the tax system already takes cognizance of the need to take out the poor. You made mention of the fact that if I'm earning below 300,000 naira, I pay just 1%. But can't we simply leave the poor out of it? The question is, who is the poor? <laughs> so one of the beauties of self-assessment is you can say I'm one of the poor and you can put in a return. Now, the, the idea of self-assessment is that you told me you have nothing. If later on I find out that you have 16 911s, 
then you're now beginning to do avoidance and I can come down hard on you. But if you genuinely are one of those people who is Mama Put earning 300,000, then I have no business talking to you again. And 1% tax is a few hundred naira. It's neither here nor there. Indeed, the bigger problem that Mama Put has is that the taxes are not harmonized across the system, that different tiers of government come in ad hoc ignore the Collection of Taxes and Levies Act, which specifies the taxes they can collect, and collects all sorts of ad hoc charges and ad hoc taxes. The net effect is that the poor are actually already paying tax, they just don't know that it's tax they're paying. Those things need to be harmonized, need to be done in such a way that you avoid duplication of taxes. One of the ones that I often talk about is signage, uh, advert, and so on. Many, many states collect signage charge or advert charge as they're allowed to under the Act. Many local governments collect the opposite name, signage. one is adverts, one is signage, and many other authorities, including capital development authorities, make further charges for signboards in their territory. So why can't that be reconciled? Uh, I've been to some states where some of the smaller people have said, we're not putting up a signboard because the minute I put up a signboard, they're coming after me for 15,000 and I haven't even sold anything yet. So that needs to be uh, uh, tidied and cleaned up. So you'll find out that then the small people will not actually be impacted. The second part of that equation is once you start having sufficient money, you can start doing social projects. So they will benefit. It is part of Be My Brother's Keeper. Uh, this may sound superfluous. I uh, haven't spoken about the critical factors uh, that will engender uh, taxpaying culture in the populace. And that's talking about Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio that is currently put at an abysmally low 6% compared to <laughs> what they would call in business industry standard. Yes. Let's look at the West African subregion, 15%, 12%. How can we get Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio into the double digits realm in the next year or two? What we could do first of all is actually apply the tax laws that we have already existing. So post the VAIDS window, actually go out and make assessments on companies that are not within the net or have not been paying tax. Now we may have some arguments over the quantum of the tax, but you're now in. Now if a thousand people are paying 10 naira, that's 10,000. If a hundred people are paying one naira, that's 100 naira. So even if 100 people are paying uh, 100 naira, that's just barely the same 10,000. So the more people we have in, the greater the amount of that, that figure will, will go up. And it needs to happen at all tiers of government. So um, state governments need to effectively and actively collect PAYE. And PAYE is not just of government officials. It's of teachers. It's of people who work in hospitality. It's of all of these other areas, all of these businesses. This applies to every business that has three or more employees. So we need to go aggressively. I know some states where I've asked for a list of registered businesses. You have eight, 9,000 hotels bakeries and similar things, each of which has got three or more staff, when you ask how many are actually within the net, 24 in one case. So we need to expand that net. We need to bring people in. We can be accommodating as we bring people in. You are not going to be able to chase everybody, so you, you bring people. Once we have people in the net, you can then start to work on risk analysis and work out who are the people who are now really lying and who are the ones worth going after further. So those really are the only ways. You've got to expand your net and you've got to start applying the laws. If not, it's still going to be a theoretical discussion because of course the economies are not standing still, businesses are going elsewhere. In addition, when we think about markets, it's a whole range of people from my famous Mama Put person to grain aggregators, people who buy and sell rice, uh, sorghum, by the trailer load. Now, if you have a trailer load, 600 bags of rice on it, then you know how much money is sitting there. And then you also have the big transporters. These are the ones who do commercial transport. It's not unknown for big traders in the market to own five or six or seven or eight 911s or trailers. So it's not just enough to capture the trailers, it's to use that information. We have that information within the tax authorities because they have to do road tax. So we know the number of vehicles that 
Mr. A owns. And therefore, we can now start to make an assessment. There's no way you're going to keep 16 trailers running if you're not making at least 1,000 Naira for each of the trailers per day. Let's just take it at the most rudimentary level of that one. So that's 16,000 Naira a day. By the time we run it up for a month, that's uh, five, nearly five or 600,000 for the month. By the time we run that for a year, it's 12. So we already start to know. And remember I said, that's what you make. So you don't come and start telling me, but it costs you money to run it because I've taken your net figure. So it's little things like that that will suddenly start to take people who are paying, if they are paying, 5, 10, 15, 20,000 Naira, or whatever the minimum tax that the state says it should pay to get a tax clearance certificate, into the realms of what they should be paying. In return, I can tell you that all those trailer driver, tra trailer driver owners, those trailer vehicle owners, will start to demand from the state, now I'm paying you this, fix my roads. So the accountability comes back into the question. It's a chicken and an egg. Which comes first? But, but talking about using those information at your disposal, I mean, somebody has six trailers, you used that example, uh, you know how much he's making, nets, blah, 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 blah. What is stopping the tax authorities from doing what they should do? A lack of capacity. Mm -hmm. There is a lack of sufficient trained capacity across all of the tiers of government. You will find that quite a number of the officers are not either with the right attitude or aptitude or training to be able to convert some of this information into credible uh, 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 assessments that, that they can push out. Secondly is an unwillingness to create education fora. And there are two types, there are two things when you're talking to people. One of them is communication. Pay your tax, so the other one is consultation. You need to pay your tax. I know you don't have money today, but if you are owing me 100,000, split it into 10, pay me every month. So then it starts to feel, okay, so I know I have to pay in my heart of hearts 100, but you and me, if we're asked to bring out 100,000 now, we'll struggle. But if you're told bring out 10,000 every month, you can work it out. So taxpayers don't know that. Some tax officials don't even know that partial collections are better than no collections in a structured agreement which has taken into account all the things that are there. We also need to bring in the professionals. Many of them don't issue VAT uh, uh, invoices, and yet they are lawyers, they are accountants. They are the very professions that know that they should be issuing uh, VAT uh, uh, invoices along for their services. And um, an area, if everybody who was involved in tribunals before uh, elections were required to uh, uh, make their returns, mm. you would find a massive amount of tax was just paid mm. because we know how much that they earn. And if they were just paying 5% VAT on the figures that they earn. Mm. Again, and all of this money, remember, lots of little monies add up to a large sum of money, yeah. and that's what would take the GDP up. But it has to be across the piece. Mm. Uh, an anchor borrower for the CBN who's got a 50 hectare farm is making at least 20 million naira a year. At the moment, most of them haven't even thought about tax. We've not even put anything in to the tablets. On that 20 million, there's at least one and a half, two million tax to be paid. And it means that lots more people pay it and we're starting to increase in those industries as well because GDP is a function of the wider economy and tax is just a percentage. So as that wider one continues to expand, if we don't keep pace with the tax, we are going to continue to go backwards, not forwards. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, calls on all corporate organizations operating in Nigeria to register for the purpose of payment of taxes and obtain a tax identification number TIN. All registered companies must obtain a tax identification number immediately from the nearest FIRS office. You can also collect and return tax registration forms from the Federal Inland Revenue Service Engagement and Enlightenment Tax Team's feet on compliance checks exercise in your area. A company which is yet to commence business after at least six months of incorporation must pay a pre-operational levy of 20,000 Naira in the first year and 25,000 Naira for subsequent years to obtain its tax clearance certificate TCC. Note that filing and payment of VAT and withholding tax returns must be done on or before the 21st day of every month. Register for VAT. File all tax returns as and at when due. Be a responsible corporate citizen of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Dr. Abani, thank you very much for asking. Thank you very much. To talk to us. It's always a pleasure speaking much. to you. Thank you. Where you are, 
that was Dr. Mark Abani, One Gone, Many More to Come. Remember, it's a series on how to institutionalize tax pain culture in the Nigerian polity. Next episode, we'll be talking to Chief David Ajibola Olorun Lake, widely regarded as the doyen of tax practice in Nigeria. Keep a date with us and thank you for watching.